You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to slice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Matt Groening. Matt Groening was born February 15th, 1954. He grew up in Portland, and after college, he moved down to L.A., where he focused on writing. He started making little cartoons to vent his frustration as he struggled to make a career in the entertainment industry. In 1987, Matt Groening was a moderately successful comic creator when James L. Brooks called him up. Brooks was the executive producer of The Tracy Ullman Show. The show was a variety show with some sketch comedy, song and dance numbers, and they wanted to develop short cartoons based on Groening's comic published in the Los Angeles Reader. This is the kind of moment young aspiring artists dream of. His work would be brought to life coming off the panels and pages and onto millions of television screens across the United States. While Graining was in the lobby waiting to be called into Brooks's office, the real-world implications of his dream come true started to sink in. The Tracy Ullman Show was on the Fox network. Today, Fox is huge, but in 1987, Fox was just getting started. The network had only launched the previous fall, and few people thought it could be serious competition against the big three networks in America, ABC, CBS, and NBC. Graining had found some success getting his comic in national circulation, and bringing it to Fox would mean complications with rights to his intellectual property. If the network went belly up, he didn't want his popular comic to get the stink of failure. He also, just as a practical matter, didn't want to lose the rights to the comic that was paying the bills. He decided the best way to seize the opportunity, while at the same time protecting his comic, would be to develop a new idea. He pitched a satirical cartoon, a distorted sort of funhouse mirror look at the American Family sitcom. Nobody could have predicted that would go on to become the longest-running scripted comedy TV show in history. I'm talking, of course, about The Simpsons. The idea may have come on somewhat spontaneously, and there were some stumbles in development. Graining had never developed an animated cartoon before, so he assumed the studio would polish up his drawings, while the animators assumed that he sent the work as he wanted it to be produced, so they simply traced his rough sketches. The early episodes were rough. But that's not to say it wasn't thoughtfully crafted. Many of the characters are named in tribute to Graining's own family members, like his younger sisters, Lisa and Margaret. Homer is Graining's father's name. Even adult children like to drive their parents nuts a little bit, and if you don't believe me, listen to the full episode I did on Homer Simpson, the artist, in which I dragged my poor mother on. Graining thought it would be funny to drive his father a little bit nuts by naming the oafish buffoon after him. I have to imagine that Homer Graining had to have had some mixed feelings about the character bearing his name as being the loudest, most obnoxious, and jaw-droppingly foolish character on television, while at the same time, the more people watched and laughed at the character, the more successful his son would be. One of the writers for The Simpsons once said that he would ask himself what a dog might say in order to figure out how Homer's character would respond to various situations. Graining has said that his father, Homer, was completely different from the character that bears that name. The elder Graining was smart and sweet, taking the joke in stride, but with one major stipulation. Homer must always remain faithful to his loving wife, Marge. I think this is the key to the success of the series. Homer's an oaf, but with heart. Satire with a heart just hits differently. It feels safer to laugh as those foibles are exaggerated to an absurd degree when we as the audience can feel it is coming from a place of love. 
the way we joke and sometimes gently tease our friends and family. Because at the end of the day, a clever insight and a funny line are great, but it's the heart that sustains something. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.